really interesting mushroom that I have some strong opinions about. This is how to make chaga tea. So I would use this purely as a novelty. I don't take this for health benefits at all. Uh, there's also some information on side effects and stuff on my website in the post linked in the video description you should definitely take a look at uh, because there was a new book that came out in 2022 that I reference and some of the side effects are drastic especially pertaining to oxalates. So what you're going to do, you're going to go out in the winter and chip the chaga off a tree with a hammer and a chisel and I'm on my friend's land near Moose Lake. Uh, harvesting chaga from trees is probably going to be illegal in state parks near you, depending on where you are. Then I'm going to bring the mushroom home. I'm going to put it on a uh, firm, steady surface. And then I'm just going to break the mushroom into pieces using the hammer and the chisel. And you can see there's some debris there in the, in the center. They're all kind of a little bit different. And we're just going to break it up into chunks. It doesn't take too long, but I like to do this in a garage because some of that black outer surface gets kind of crumbly and it will kind of fly all over the place. So once you get the mushroom all broken up, you are going to have chunks that look a little bit like this. Brush off any spider webs or anything like that. And then we just put it into a dehydrator and we're going to dry it until it's bone dry. That's going to be about 100F for 24 hours. What I do not do is you're going to see chaga powder in all kinds of stuff. I mean, chocolate, mud water, many, many different things. And in my opinion, chaga powder is a complete waste of mushroom. And there's one big reason, a couple reasons. The first is that the mushroom is ground. When it's ground, it's so fine that even when it goes through a coffee filter, there's these small particles that I can feel on my tongue that I don't like, and it adds tannins. But the bigger reason I'll get to, and that's because you can reuse the chunks. So to make the basic tea, we just take a chunk of mushroom. We're going to add about eight cups of water to a half to one ounce piece. And then there's after about 15 to 20 minutes, it's going to start getting some good color. And this is technically not a tea. Technically, this is a decoction because we're cooking it for a long time and we're, it's not a simple infusion. And once it starts to get some nice kind of like red tones, and after about 30 minutes, the tea is ready. But you can sit there and cook it for a longer time. But extended cooking for like two or four hours is going to concentrate the oxalates. So if you are watching that in your diet, something to take note of. And so the big thing here is you can reuse the chunks two, three, or even four times. And there's really no change in the flavor of the tea. It's really fascinating. So there is batch number two. You can see maybe it looks a little bit lighter. The flavor is identical to the first batch, generally speaking. There you go. We'll take our chunk, take it out, and then we'll just make another batch. And we'll keep making batches until all of the, all of the goodness has been drawn out of the mushroom. There's four different batches of tea. One of them I cooked a little bit less. They look like they have, uh, they're, uh, there's a little difference in color, but the flavor is basically all the same. Chaga doesn't have a lot of flavor at all. So four batches of tea or one batch of tea, you know, it's not really a question there. Hey, everybody. Let's have a little story time about chaga. So as I mentioned in the article, I only take chaga as a novelty. I don't think it's going to cure anything. I might take a cup if I feel a cold coming on, but even then I feel like it's a placebo effect. So I'm going to tell you what it tastes like and then I'll read a little bit to you from this book. So if you give chaga to somebody, Mostly, they're probably going to say it tastes like nothing. There is not really a crazy flavor to discover here or anything like that. It is so mild. It's the mildest tea that I've ever had. And also, like I mentioned, the, the multiple batches that you can make from a single chunk, they basically all taste the same with a little bit of variation in color. Like, they all taste the same. There's no crazy flavor here going on. But it's also not offensive. It's fine. And it's a hot drink. You know, it's not bad at all.
and I, I do like it. It helps me consume more water. It, it, you know, like I'm not taking it because I think it's going to cure me or make me fly or something like that. And as far as the medicinal things about it, you know, I think it's just good to have a healthy dose of skepticism. And in this book, thank you to my friend Michael Carnes for letting me borrow this. One of the important things to consider is that there is not one recent human clinical trial. None. As of April 2020. Not a single one. And the older trials that they're looking at, they're all from Russia. Or they're maybe from China. But most of the ones that people talk about are from Russia, and they're like 40 to 60 years old, and most importantly, none were randomized, placebo-controlled, or blinded. Not a single one, okay? And on a personal note, you know, one of the reasons I haven't shared any content about Chaga is when I was a broke line cook, I thought, hey, maybe I can make a couple extra bucks and I can sell some. Well, I would be lucky to, you know, cover my gas, honestly. And I sold some to a woman who was giving it to her son who had cirrhosis. And they wanted to go the all-natural route and didn't want to go to doctors. Well, I sold it to him here and there. I mean, I probably made like a hundred bucks the whole time. And after about a year, the guy died. So... I've lived with that knowledge, you know, wondering, was I party to someone's death? Obviously, free will is a thing, and they would have gotten it somewhere else if it wasn't from me. But that's something to think about. And there's also some side effects here to talk about uh, that, that are not talked about in, in other literature that I have come across. So they urge caution against large or prolonged ingestion as a recreational beverage or a substitute for coffee. And that's because it has oxalates, okay? So that is something that is very important to talk about and that is new information to me because oxalates can be a big problem for some people. Uh, here, I think the most important thing, the most important example, a 72 year old woman was diagnosed with cancer. She was taking four to five teaspoons daily for six months. She suffered liver failure and complete irreversible kidney failure due to oxalates. Okay? So, not only will chaga, is there no proof that chaga is going to cure or heal anything, but if you take it internally, I'm assuming in powder form here, not in tea, if you take it internally like that, it could actually harm you. So, the moral of the story is that I think, especially when someone is telling you, when someone's telling you that something will heal you and do all kinds of crazy things, have a healthy dose of skepticism, especially if that person or company is trying to sell you something. There's a lot more information on my website, including some new side effects you might want to take a look at. You can see that through the link in the video description. Thanks for watching.